This is John. I'm going to take you on a quick tour today of our facility here at the Red Snapper Research Station here in Nassau, Bahamas. Behind me you see a little pump house and out in front of that is a well. That gray pipe that goes on down into the ground there uh, goes down 450 feet into a 500 foot hole. And then the blue pipe that's hanging down into that hangs down about 40 feet because the water level in the ground comes up to within 10 feet of the surface where I'm standing, ground level. So that means that water from between 450 feet to 500 feet is coming up that gray pipe and being pumped up in the blue pipe and going into that white pump house. Now I'll show you a picture of that pump house. We'll go over there and that'll be next. This is a picture inside the pump house. I have two 20 horsepower pumps and just go pumps here. I use one of them uh, each month and rotate them, switching them back and forth. That's the power control on the wall over there. And uh, we're able to control this from our telephone to switch over the valve and everything else. So um, we only use one pump at a time in here. When the water actually comes out of the pump through one of these two pipes, you see one is turned off here on the left. There, that's shut off. And this one here is cut back so we're not running full throttle. And it comes out of the pump house, goes underground, and then comes up this gray pipe here, right here, down there, goes up to the top, and into this degasser. It's about a 20 foot tall degasser because we're using well water. We have hydrogen sulfide build up in our well, in our well water. It smells like um, sulfur, kind of like rotten egg. But the water is absolutely perfectly clear. It's filtered through miles of fossilized coral. And so the water is actually in perfect condition. It's ocean water that runs underneath the island here in Nassau, New Providence Island. It goes in the top of this degasser. It's sprayed out through a manifold and air through this plenum here on the side. I'll point to it here, there. It's pumped in and the air goes up and out the top and the water falls down and it strips out the hydrogen sulfide and air aeration. Now I have two, I've set up two blowers here, a redundant system. Redundancy is always important in aquaculture. So I have two blowers here set up on redundant systems. So they both tap into the same line going up the degasser and right into the plenum. And then water falls down into this and comes out gravity flow out of this uh, bottom of the uh, degasser. Shot, this is just a shot of the control system for the blowers. You can see we have redundant systems. One's on auto, one's on on. And if the power ever cuts out, it switches over from one blower to the next automatically. And then the red light comes on and tells us that it's switched over. Now we have to use well water here because we're nowhere near the seashore. We're in the middle of the island. And this, is a, this represents about 500 gallons a minute running through our tank. This is our effluent stream coming back out through our flow through system for our our aquaculture tank with all the water coming back out. As you remember, we take water in from 450 to 500 feet deep, and then it goes into this uh, catch basin, runs underground this way to that blue well cap here. And we drop it in here where that blue cap is. To, uh, another well that's dug down to about 100 feet. That way we're putting salt water back in below the freshwater lens which is above that level and that way we're not contaminating the fresh water that's in the ground. 
do you have the capacity to heat or chill any tank or uh, any series of tanks i've got five heat pumps here that i plumbed in that enables me to heat or chill water depending and we use uh chilled water in the winter time for simulating overwintering uh, environment for the snapper and then we heat it back up again in the uh, in the springtime and I also chill water for shipping live lobsters puts them to sleep and lowers slows down their metabolism so I have put together this system for that purpose and now we're entering into the fish room the grow out room here at the Red Snapper Aquaculture Research Center in Nassau, Bahamas. These are incubator tanks here where we put our eggs in. But prior to that, we also grow uh, zooplankton in these five IBC containers here. One, two, three, four, five. We grow copepods, rotifers, and Artemia in these tanks. Yeah, these are getting a little bit rusty these days. But they work good for uh, growing zooplankton. And we also grow phytoplankton outside in the sunshine and pump that in. And from here, the, the zooplankton are fed to larvae in the incubators over here. We have six incubators and some are 500 liters and some are 200 liters. We have two 200 liter tanks and we have five 500 liter tanks. You see that. I also have um, two 5600 liter larval tanks here. These are not in use currently. You can see that we have some netting around the top to keep fish from jumping out. Sometimes we use these tanks for temporary holding. If we have an injured fish or anything like that, if a fish is missing a scale or something, or if we need to uh, clean a fish tank and temporarily put some fish in here. This is a homemade egg collector here. And also we store some of our Screens, our micro screens here. We have everything from one micron up to a thousand microns. These are center stand, standpipe micro screens that we use during the uh, larvae culture. I also have about 10 of these rectangular tanks, which are about six feet in diameter, 12 feet long. I think we have some uh, lobster in this one. Um, we buy live lobster and sell it to the hotels here locally. We're not shipping currently to Asia or China um, because we're waiting on some permits from China to do that. I also have a couple fish tanks here. You can see that all of our fish tanks have screening on the top and a uh, cover above that to keep these fish from jumping out. We're going to take a look in here. See if we can see any fish. Oh, here they are. Here's our American red snapper, Lujanus campechianus. These fish here are about two and a half to three years old. They have another year to go before they're large enough to spawn in our tank. They're going to be future broodstock. water flowing in, aeration. All these tanks have uh, redundant systems. They have three different types of aeration so that if one stops for any reason, the other two will still be working. And I have two of these tanks. They're about um, oh, 12 foot diameter. They're about three feet of water in them. So they hold about uh, 2,500 gallons of water. You'll see more of these Rectangular tanks here. These are empty right now. Uh, anything that has a blue cover on it, 
It's going to have fish in it temporarily. So I have a whole row of these tanks. Uh, originally, I put them in here for lobster, for holding live lobster, for shipping to Asia. But now we're also growing uh, fish in these tanks. Come down here to the room. Every one of these tanks has uh, ambient water temperature and controlled water temperature capabilities. Here's another tank here, another uh, 12 foot diameter tank. Snapping it. Again, you can see that they're all covered in walls to keep the fish from jumping out. You need to know pretty high these fish can jump out and right through the roof if they're not covered maintain a particular flow pattern in here so that the fish can swim against the current continually and we have outside standpipes for all of our tanks That way we don't have to control the water level internally in the tank and have more structure in the tank. It makes it easier for cleaning the tank. And again, three different aeration systems. Now this is a rectangular tank that I have some bird stock in. I'll go ahead and lift the cover off this so you can see the fish. There we go. So we'll open up the cover and you can see the fish. Put my hand out here. I don't want to put it too close because it'll jump up and bite me. <laughs> Literally. But some of these fish are uh, actually about 15 pounds, so they're, they're nice sized fish. They're bigger than they seem on camera because of the, the girth of the fish, the width. And again, we have to keep the, all the tanks covered when the fish jump out. Here we have another tank, another 10,000 meter tank. These tanks are about 15 feet in diameter and about 8 feet deep, maybe 16 feet in diameter. Um, you see the fish, the wind has been fed, they haven't been fed yet, so we're all looking kind of hungry. See the water flow in there coming in. There's a lot of water. And we only pump water one time. Like I showed you in the beginning, the well pump lifts the water about 10 feet from underground, hooks it up to the top of the degassing tower. And then from there, everything is gravity flow. So we only pump water one time. And this entire facility is using the one water pump to move water. And again, we have three different aeration systems in these tanks as well. We've got about 350 fish in here. That means they're at a density of about 30 kilos per cubic meter, which is a good, a good uh, density for rearing these fish. We could probably grow them up to 40 kilos per cubic meter because they are swimming fish and they take well to uh, being against, uh, in a dense environment. But uh, we just need to go bring them much more than 30 kilos per cubic meter for our very uh, consideration. This is a view of the room. And another angle. We have a rectangular tank going down. There's one of the circular tanks. Two more of the rectangular tanks. Now we have up here, this tank is covered. I have brood stock in here. 
here, the artificial lighting. These fish are, are the largest fish. They are about 20 pounds average size. There's um, 16 fish in here, eight males and eight females. 20, again, 20 pounds each. Uh, these are our largest spotters. They're F1 generation. Like all of our fish are F1 generation. None of these are wild caught. They're all from fingerlings that we grew here in NASA. These fish are three and a half to four years old. And we think that they'll start spotting here this month. There are very low density in this place. About 10,000 even here. Now here on this tank we have where the brute stock are. We have it covered because we control the lighting in here, the number of hours of lighting and daylight and darkness. You can see what the fish look like in the window. They swim by. You can also see one of the Venturi jets on the far end of the tank putting water, or excuse me, air into the tank, airing the tank. This guy. Oh, up close and personal. These fish are very curious. They'll all come over and look at you. And again, this is a 10,000 liter tank or 10 ton tank here. You can see how the fish are schooling fish and they're swimming around in the school. This is our main broodstock tank. As we come up to the window on our other tank, this is a tank that has about 350 fish in it and a density of 30 kilos per cubic meter. There's a lot of fish in this, this tank. Uh, let's see, it's kind of dark in there because of the cover. The water is actually very clear, it's just dark, so it's hard to see the fish. Back up here. There we go. Beautiful fish, absolutely gorgeous. No scales missing, these fish are catered to. They eat better than I do. They eat shrimp, squid, fish, krill. Uh, they eat the ultimate sushi diet. Now this is an egg collector. So all the water coming through the uh, large tank is filtered through this screen. It's a micro screen net and then the eggs that float up from my eggs get caught in this system here it's just a small tank with a pvc frame inside or a net that's suspended on the pvc frame and we're able to catch all the eggs that flow out of the tank and again everything is uh, controlled by outside standpipe. Now this is part of our alarm system. We have two tanks sitting outside of the fish tank. And the water level inside the fish tank and the water level inside these two 55 gallon drum plastic drums is the same. And we have down in here a float valve. There's a float valve floating upwards. Reverse float valve. So that means when it floats up, the pumps, uh, the alarm stays off. When it floats down, when the float valve goes down, it sets off the alarm. And we know that the pump is stopped. Now, this is part of our alarm system. We have two tanks sitting outside of the fish tank. 
and the water level inside the fish tank and the water level inside these two 55 gallon drum plastic drums is the same. What we have down in here a float valve. There's a float valve floating upward. It's a reverse float valve. So that means when it floats up, the pumps, uh, the alarm stays off. When it floats down, when the float valve goes down, it sets off the alarm. And then we know that the pump is stopped. This is just a view of the entire room. You can see the cover we have on the tank. It's not there. It's just a tarp hanging over the tank to block out the light so we can control the daylight and darkness hours inside to help us control the conditioning of the spawning of this tank. We have the king of the tank, round tank. Is all our tank is and again, any tank that has a blue cover on it has fish in it, and we have to have them covered to keep them from jumping out. Now you can see some down there through the mesh of the cover. Of course, there's a lot of piping that goes on here. This is all the piping down the back side. Yes, I personally have put in all these piping a lot of piping when we have, you know, uh, ambient water temperature lines, chilled lines, those are the ones that have the black insulation on them, heated lines, so we're able to control exactly the water temperature of every tank that needs be. One last look here at the room. You can see the incubator from the far end, a couple round tanks, larva tanks, one of our workers. Here on the deck we have two big 10,000 meter tanks as well. So not a big facility, but it functions very well, very practical, and we're able to uh, do a lot here because of the diversity of uh, control systems, being able to control water temperature, water flow, recirculation or not. If you want to recirculate a certain amount of water or have it all be flow through. Well, thanks for joining me on this quick tour of our American Red Snapper facility here in Nassau, Bahamas. I just want to get, have you get a look at the entire facility and see where all the action takes place. Come on.